Direct Drive Smart Trainers used to be reserved as flagship products with anything below that delivering only empty promises and quite a lot of rather sweaty swearing. However, in my opinion, that all changed in 2018 when Wahoo launched this, the Kicker Core, a half-priced direct drive trainer that left me wondering why anyone would want or need to spend more. Since then, despite several lawsuits trying to prevent it, the Kicker Core has been joined by some stiff competition, namely the Zwift Hub One and more recently, the Van Riesel D500, when Decathlon decided that it too wanted to join the party. So, is the Kicker Core still the one to buy? Or is your money better spent elsewhere? Well, we're gonna find out. When it comes to turbo training, I think the sweet spot of performance comes at around the 500 pounds price point. A direct drive or wheel off trainer that you mount your bike's drivetrain to directly is quieter, smoother, easier to train on, more stable, and won't wear out a tire like a wheel on trainer. In fact, other than often being cheaper, it is rather tricky to find any positives of a wheel on trainer. The three trainers we have here represent the very best in the business when it comes to budget direct drive smart trainers, and when their prices range by less than 100 pounds, whether to buy the new Wahoo Kicker Core Zwift One, the Zwift Hub One, or the Van Riesel D500 is a question on many consumers' minds. In fact, it was so high up our list of questions that we didn't wait for Decathlon to send us one and went out and purchased our very own. Where better to start than with the price? Now, these are bound to fluctuate a bit, but here goes. The Wahoo Kicker Core and the Zwift Hub One are now priced identically at £549 which now includes a cassette of your choice in the case of the Kicker Core and this funky one cog sprocket thing in the case of the Zwift Hub One. In both cases, you are ready to ride out the box. What's more is that you also get a one year Zwift subscription included. Now that is worth around £130 if indeed it is something you actually want. However, as of February 2024, the Wahoo Kicker Core received its first harbour update in six years and you can now buy that too with this Zwift cog. It's called the Wahoo Kicker Core Zwift One, and just like Zwift's own trainer, uses a blipper to change gear virtually. It still costs £549 at RRP. The Van Riesel D500 looks to be the clear winner in terms of price at least, with an RRP of £449.99 a full £100 cheaper than the other two. However, you will need to consider that you also need to factor in the cost of a set, so around 25 quid. And if you do want Swift, then you'll actually end up spending more than with the other two on the first year at least. As long as you have a bike with wheels bigger than 650B and a set between eight speed and 12 speeds, the chances are you'll be able to happily pedal on any of one of these turbos. That's what the manufacturers claim anyway. All three come with the spacers, adapters, and adjustability to happily take a plethora of road, gravel, or mountain bikes. With Zwift Hub One and the new Wahoo with the really long name, you no longer need to worry about how many gears your bike has when ordering a turbo. And instead, you change gear virtually with this little blip box that fits to your handlebars. The original Kicker Core allows you to choose a set of your choice at the checkout, but the Van Riesel requires you to purchase this separately. If this does happen to be a 12-speed cassette, then unlucky, because that free hub body for the D500 is currently sold out with no time frame given of when you can expect stock to return. I am also disappointed to say that I've been having other compatibility issues with the Van Riesel trainer too. For example, there's just no way that my specialized alley sprint is fitting on because the brake caliper mount collides with the body of the turbo. I've been through the Broad CC vast collection of bikes and have come to the conclusion that every rim brake bike I've tried will fit, nearly all the carbon disc brake bikes, but I've had less luck with aluminium disc brake bikes, which usually have larger brake mounts. Depending on your bike, that could be an absolute deal breaker. It's also worth noting that trainers fitted with the Zwift cogs are only really options if you're using Zwift as your training platform of choice, as the click shifter connects to the game and not the trainer. All three turbos do require some setup before using, but luckily it's all fairly self-explanatory and you do get all the tools provided. All three actually have a fairly similar design and need their legs bolting on before use. Zwift have certainly gone to the most effort to make it as easy as possible to get them the right way around and also pick out the correct adapters to fit your bike. That one goes on there. 
With the Van Rysel, you do have the added chore of finding and fitting the correct cassette. And the tools for this aren't provided, so bear that in mind before purchasing. Most people won't be fortunate enough to have somewhere where they can leave a turbo set up, and even if you do, it's quite likely that you'll want to hide it away during summer months. The Wahoo trainers fold to reduce their storage size, albeit not by a lot. The Van Rysel doesn't fold, but it is the only one of the three with a carry handle, which definitely makes it far easier to carry around the house. Another nice touch on the D500 is this magnetic storage for the riser block. Very nice. One of the main differences between the three turbos that we have here and the big daddy range topping options is the resistance that they can provide. Even so, the electromagnetic brakes will provide up to 1800 watts on the Kicker Core and Zwift Hub one, and up to 1500 watts of resistance on the D500. Clearly, the Wahoo and Zwift trainers win in this regard, but the vast majority of riders won't be traveling either figure, so it's kind of neither here nor there, and therefore probably won't be a deciding factor. What these figures do mean is that the Wahoo and Zwift trainers can simulate up to 16% climbs, whilst the Van Rysel only up to 12%. On Zwift, for example, this means that there are a few climbs where you could potentially max out. But if you do, no, you won't find it any easier. You just won't have to grab another gear. Rest assured that your in-game speed won't be any higher than if you had a more powerful trainer. The only thing that will happen is that you can go up a 16% climb in the same gear as a 25% climb. That's if your train difficulty is set to 100%. Even with your cadence the same, the trainer's software will then calculate your speed as much slower on the steeper one. So the only noticeable difference is that it will feel slightly less realistic. Speaking of realism, let's compare some flywheel weights. It's 5.4 kg on the Wahoo and 4.7 kg on the other two trainers. Typically, a higher flywheel weight makes the experience feel more like riding out on the road because there's more inertia and on those momentary lapses in putting the power down, you don't just lose all your momentum and therefore heavier usually feels smoother. To be honest, all three trainers feel pretty similar in this regard and I've been hard pressed to feel the difference. This is an area that all three trainers have mastered and is a big positive for them compared to cheaper competition and particularly wheel on trainers. Now, there are two parts to this, accuracy, as in how far from the real figure the trainer reads and reliability, which is how consistent that figure is. Let's start with the claimed accuracies. The Wahoo trainer and the Van Rysel D500 claim to measure within plus or minus 2%. So at 200 watts, that's around plus or minus four watts. The Zwift trainer has a slightly lesser claimed accuracy. That's plus or minus 2.5%. Now, even though there are trainers out there that can measure to plus or minus 1%, for the majority of us, our money is well placed with one of these three. In fact, unless you're doing elite level virtual racing, then there's hardly any point in getting a more accurate power measurement. It is after all more accurate, or at least as accurate, as a lot of the power meters you'd use out on the road. It's hard to pick a winner between them based on accuracy then. However, it's the reliability of these figures that has been the downfall of many a turbo. To test the reliability of the figures, we've spent the last few weeks, months, and indeed years, benchmarking the turbos against known power meters. What we found is that the Kicker Core produces numbers that we would bet our lives on. During both sprints and steady state efforts, there is hardly any difference between the figures from the turbo and our trusty pedal and spider based power meters. What difference there is can easily be accounted for by drivetrain losses. The Zwift Hub also has power reporting plenty good enough to use as a benchmark. It's well within the accuracy range that Zwift states and it's very repeatable. As with nearly all trainers, it is worth calibrating the trainer every now and then, but in both geared and single cog builds, we've not seen the power drift away from believable numbers. I was initially very impressed with the Van Rysel D500 too. The numbers seemed bang on the money, albeit the calibration procedure can't be done in most training software and has to be done in a separate app. A bit of a faff with account making, etc. but no biggie. However, as my session continued, either I was getting stronger by the second or something dodgy was going on. Unfortunately, the data from my on-bike power meter revealed that it was the latter. The D500 starts the session measuring well within the claimed accuracy, but as the trainer begins to heat up, the number drifts away from what my Quark and indeed other power meters have measured. Nerdy people call this thermal drift, and it's where power meters rely heavily on resistance, which is of course very dependent on temperature. And turbos, they get quite hot. 
Now, it has to be said that this used to be just the semi-accepted norm with indoor trainers, and it's only the likes of Tax, Wahoo, and Leap's excellent recent trainers that have seemingly solved this problem. The problem with the Van Riesel isn't bad enough to completely write off the D500. It is still functional, and the scale of the problem is far, far less than on some other trainers I've used, but it's an area where the Wahoo and Zwift are clearly leading the way. Our final test criteria is the ERG mode capabilities. So if you're not after this feature, then feel free to skip ahead to our final verdict. ERG mode or ERG mode holds you at a set power, for example, in a training session, no matter what gear you're in and changes the resistance based on your cadence to hold you at that magic number. This used to be the absolute Achilles heel of many a smart trainer, but they're all really quite good. All three of them respond to interval changes quickly, but which one is the best? Well, my vote once again goes to the kick core. During my sessions, I'll be nicely held at my new power target within about five seconds. The Zwift Hub lags behind slightly, but there's no overshooting, and the D500 is also quite good, but not as good. On the Van Riesel offering, I'll be held at my new target power within about 15 seconds, which isn't a problem on longer efforts, but does make doing short efforts in a workout a little bit trickier. So, which one would I have? Personally, I'd still take the Kicker Core, the version that comes with a cassette. It is statistically the best turbo here. The accuracy and the ERG mode rivals turbos that cost twice as much, and it punches well above its weight. You can now buy it with virtual shifting, thanks to this Swift cog, and you can read our full initial impressions over on the Road CC website. But even though it is very good, it's not personally something I'd go for unless you've got multiple bikes with different speed group sets that you want to run on the one turbo, as you're limited to only using it with Zwift. If that is the case and you have multiple bikes sharing a turbo, then I'd probably go for the Zwift Hub one instead. It's physically very similar, has similarly excellent performance and is quiet and uncomplicated. It's probably the easiest smart trainer to set up and use if you want to use Zwift, and also promises to wear your chain a little bit less. The Van Riesel, despite being the cheapest, does get beat by the other two, but it is still a very capable trainer. In the real world, it's unlikely to actually work out much cheaper, not by the time you've brought the correct cassette and splashed out on Zwift, like many of its customers will anyway. My one word of warning with Van Riesel is to check your bike compatibility first. Perhaps I just got unlucky, but I'd have been annoyed if I'd shelled out and then couldn't fit my bike to it. Five years ago, the ERG mode capabilities, power measuring accuracy and calibration nuances would have been easy to ignore. But in 2024, they are a small step behind the leaders in the sector. Let us know which turbo you'd have in the comment section below. And if not one of these three, then what would it be? If you like this content, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for lots more cycling head-to-heads and we'll see you next time.